Good day. Today we're going to uh, talk about teaching grammar from the uh, the book of Diane Larson Freeman. Uh, this is under our subject uh, teaching and assessment of grammar. So over the century, second language educators have alternated between two types of approaches. So basically, there are there, there are two types of approaches uh, being used in language teaching. The first one is uh, the one with focus on analyzing the language and those that focus on using the language. So see the difference between the two. We have uh, one with focus on language and the other one is how the language is being used or using the language. The former have students learn the elements of language. The first one in red is um, or focus uh, we, gives focus on sounds, the structures, and vocabulary. Learn the elements of language. So, uh, what makes up what makes up a sentence? Uh, the words in the, in that particular sentence. Building toward students being able to use the elements to communicate. Uh, the first one has this belief that uh, learning the elements would help the students become better, uh, become um, um, good communicators, okay? The latter encourage students to use the language from the start, however falteringly in order to acquire it. So encourage students to use the language from the start. Early in the previous century, this distinctive pattern was observable in the shift from the more form-oriented grammar translation approach to the use-oriented direct method. So there has been a shift from more on form uh, focus. Now we are having this uh, use-oriented direct method. A more recent example of the shift is the loss of popularity of the cognitive code approach in which analyzing structures and applying rules are common practices. So we have this cognitive uh, code approach which was very, um, very, very uh, famous, very popular among language uh, classes and language teachers several uh, decades ago. This gives focus on uh, structures and uh, giving rules and the rise of more communicative approach approaches. Now we have this rise of more communicative approaches which emphasize language use over rules of language usage. This one, uh, the communicative approaches focus on the language use, how you're going to use the language over rules of language usage instead of memorizing the rules of the language. Uh, the communicative approaches give focus on how one will be using that particular language. Let's move on. Even though such language use approaches as uh, task-based and content-based are in favor these days, we have this task-based and content-based. Uh, educators agree that speaking and writing accurately is part of communicative competence. Let's always bear in mind that um, in order to be communicative competent, which is the goal of la the main goal of language uh, teaching, is to uh, develop uh, students who are communicatively uh, competent uh, there is a need for uh, students to be accurate in terms of their speaking and writing skills. Just as is being able to get one's meaning across in an appropriate manner, meaning there is really a need for uh, learners, for students, to be able to uh, get the meaning across in an appropriate manner, accurately accurate speaking and accurate writing for one to be able to be communicatively competent. Further, it has been observed that although some learners can pick up accurate linguistic form from exposure, we know that exposure can really help learners pick up accurate linguistic form uh, by, by watching uh, English films, by watching cartoons. We know children can learn form from 
from uh, their ex exposure to to the target language, specifically in English. We know Filipino learners. Uh, there are so many children who learned the language by just uh, their exposure to to television shows, to cartoons. Few learners are capable of doing so efficiently. But the problem is very few learners are capable of doing so efficiently. There are still errors which they commit. Uh, they, they do watch a lot of films. They do watch a lot of cartoons in English. But still, there are a lot of instances that they commit mistakes. They commit errors in terms of their speaking and even in their writing. Especially if they are postubicent or if their exposure is limited to the classroom. But then the problem is if the exposure of children is just in the classroom or limited in the classroom, there would be very, um, they would encounter a lot of errors in terms of uh, developing their uh, communication skills as if, as, as in the case when English is taught as a foreign language. In contrast, research has shown that teachers who focus students' attention on linguistic form during communicative interactions are more effective than those who never focus on form or who only do so in the contextualized grammar lessons. But we should bear in mind also that um, although we give focus on communication, we give focus on interactions, there are a lot of researches which, uh, which reveal that teachers who give focus on uh, linguistic form, who, who gives uh, teachers who give focus on linguistic form, who still teach um, the form, are still more effective than those who never focus on form. It follows then that most educators concur with the need to teach grammatical form. Um, our curriculum now uh, gives a, li a little less focus on, on form, but um, this particular uh, study uh, reveals that there is still a need to teach grammatical form. However, they advise doing so by focusing on form within a meaning-based or communicative approach. Meaning, you give focus on form, but still you make use of the communicative approach in presenting forms in order to avoid a return to analytic approaches in which the contextualized language forms were the object of the study. So meaning uh, the approach should be communicative as teachers present form so that it would not be uh, that analytic approach, that uh, memorizing uh, approach wherein students tend to memorize rules. <clears throat> Let us continue. Focusing on grammatical form during communicative interactions rather than forms in isolation is one way to prevent the pendulum from swinging beyond its point of equilibrium, meaning focusing on grammatical form during communicative interactions rather than forms in isolation we don't teach uh, meaning uh, the present trend or the trend in teaching grammar is that you don't focus on form in isolation, but then you make use of grammatical form. You, you teach grammatical forms in uh, communicative interactions, during communicative interactions. Equating grammar with form and the teaching of grammar with the teaching of explicit linguistic rules concerning form are unduly limiting, representing what we have called meets, which only serve to perpetuate the pendulum swing between language form and language usage. Use, meaning there must be interaction between the language form and the language use. Take note of this, grammar is about form, and one way to teach form is to give students rules. Grammar, again, Grammar is about form, and one way to teach form is to give students rules. However, 